Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the academic procession and the Chancellor. I declare that the 588th Convocation of McMaster University for the conferring of degrees is now in session. Please be seated. I am David Farrar and I'm the Provost and Vice President Academic of the University and this afternoon I have the great pleasure of acting as your Master of Ceremonies and of welcoming you all to this Convocation Ceremony. I would like to start by acknowledging and recognizing that we meet today on the traditional territories of the Mississauga and the Haudenosaunee Nations within the lands protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. I would also like to take this time to acknowledge a few leaders joining me on stage today in the middle of the stage is our Chancellor, Dr. Suzanne Labarge. Joining Suzanne is our President and Vice Chancellor, Dr. Patrick Dean. The President of Mohawk College, Mr. Ron McCurley. The Vice President Academic of Mohawk College, Mr. Paul Armstrong. Vice Provost and Dean of Graduate Studies, Dr. Doug Welsh. And uh, the Dean of the Faculty of Science, Dr. Maureen McDonald. A number of associate and assistant deans, directors, chairs, faculty members, and other honored guests are joining us on stage. Before we start the formal ceremonies today, I would ask everyone in the hall to switch off any electronic devices you have that may beep or ring during the ceremony. And I would now like to call upon our chancellor, Dr. Labarge, to make her welcoming remarks. Welcome, honored guests, family, friends, colleagues, and faculty from McMaster University and Mohawk College, and most importantly, graduates. This is an exciting day for all of you who are graduating today, as well as for all those people who have supported you and stood behind you, and in many cases, have had a key role in you being here today. You've achieved a great deal to get here, and you should all be very proud of your success and looking forward to what the future might bring. Congratulations, and enjoy the ceremony.
now my pleasure to introduce the Dean of Science, Dr. Maureen McDonald, and invite her to make her welcoming remarks. On behalf of the Faculty of Science, I welcome you to celebrate today the incredible achievements of the Faculty of Science Class of 2018. In the invitation I received to speak today, I was told that this was my chance to highlight notable events or achievements in the Faculty of Science in the last year, and to perhaps brag a little bit. While the list of things that I could highlight is long and impressive, I've actually chosen only one thing I want to brag about today, and that is you, the 2018 graduates of the Faculty of Science. You are our most notable achievement. You are the embodiment of our collective goals. The mission statement of the Faculty of Science is to advance scientific discovery and knowledge and to promote scientific literacy and understanding in our community. You have entrusted in us during the time you have spent here at McMaster in your degree with the opportunity to equip you with the skills, the knowledge and the experiences to move us forward on this lofty mission. Believe it or not, each of your assignment submissions through Avenue drop boxes, whether the drop box was open or closed when you expected it to be, laboratory reports, scientific paper reviews, Friday morning quizzes, early morning lectures, and late night study sessions have all been building towards this point today, when we are no longer preparing you for that mission, but now sending you out on a mission. As I watch your smiling faces and confident steps when you cross the stage today, I know that you will achieve not only what we have imagined for you and aspired to in our mission statement, but many things that we cannot even dream of. So as you go, know that the Faculty of Science is proud to have been part of that journey with you and that we will always be here for you in mission control at McMaster University. Thank you. I would now like to welcome Dr. Patrick Dean, President and Vice Chancellor, to the podium, who will be presenting our honorary degree recipient. <clears throat> Chancellor Labarge, by the authority of the Senate of McMaster University, I have the honor to present William Harris. William Bill Harris is one of the two founding fathers of astronomy at McMaster University, contributing to and inspiring what has become an internationally recognized research and teaching unit. His influence, however, has reached far beyond his home department of physics and astronomy. He has been a key figure in broader science education through involvement with the arts and science program the Integrated Science Program, the Origins Institute, and the Big Questions course. Educated at the University of Alberta and the University of Toronto with a postdoctoral fellowship at Yale University, Dr. Harris joined the McMaster faculty in 1976, becoming a professor in 1984 and professor emeritus in 2014. His research in globular clusters, large collections of gravitationally bound stars with distinct geometry, played arguably the leading role in founding and establishing the significance of this area of astronomical investigation. It has since proven to be a field that has contributed greatly to our understanding of stellar and galaxy formation. Dr. Harris has published his research in more than 210 peer-reviewed journal articles. Dr. Harris has made important contributions to his field through a number of professional leadership positions as well. He served as chair of the board for the Canada-France-Hawaii Telescope, president of the Canadian Astronomical Society, 
chair of the NSERC Grant Selection Committee for Space and Astronomy, and as a member of the NSERC CASCA Long Range Planning Panel on Canadian Astronomy. This latter commitment led to a successful national astronomy strategy that has included participation in major projects such as the Atacama Large Millimeter Array and the James Webb Space Telescope. Dr. Harris was a member of the College of Reviewers for the Canada Research Chairs Program for nearly a decade, served on the Hubble Fellowship Selection Committee for the Space Telescope Science Institute, and is currently a member of the International Astronomical Union's International Membership Committee. Dr. Harris, who has been the principal investigator on 10 Hubble Space Telescope programs more than any other Canadian, has also served on Hubble Space Telescope time allocation panels five times, acting as a chair for three of those panels. A fellow of the Royal Society of Canada since 2004, Dr. Harris has received some of the most prestigious honors in his field. He was named a Killam Research Fellow in 2008, and four years later, the Canadian Astronomical Society presented him with the C.S. Beals Award in recognition of his outstanding achievements and a career's worth of research excellence. Chancellor Labarge, I present to you a scientist, an educator, a McMaster pioneer, and one of Canada's most successful and influential observational astronomers. I ask that you confer upon William Harris the degree Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. William Harris, by the authority of McMaster University Senate, I have the great pleasure to confer upon you the degree Doctor of Science Honoris Causa in McMaster University with all the rights and privileges pertaining to that degree. Congratulations. Can we get you to sign over here. I would now like to invite Dr. Harris to deliver the convocation address. Well, Madam Chancellor, Mr. President, honored guests and colleagues, uh, graduates, along with your parents, relatives, and friends, I'm very honored to be here indeed um, with all the rest of you who are getting your degrees today. Uh, but I'm also very acutely aware that I am the last thing standing between you and your degrees, uh, so I'm going to be brief. <laughs> We're all here because of science, and I'm con constantly struck, I have been my whole career, by how science always moves forward. It's one of the few human institutions that can say that. So in the next very few minutes, I'd just like to talk about how for a moment. Um, the, the, the normal reaction to that question as to how it keeps moving forward is just, okay, new ideas, new tools. Uh, and that's true enough, but I don't think it's the whole story, and I'm going to come back to that. But let me start with that, with that as a case. And let me start with a very recent example from my own field. Just three weeks ago, I was at the annual meeting of the Canadian Astronomical Society, which was held this year in, in Victoria, a lovely city. Hundreds of astrophysicists gathered uh, to talk over new results, form collaborations, exchange ideas. And in one of the featured talks, uh, we heard about the details of a discovery, a major discovery in our field that happened just a few months ago. And this is it. In a rather normal galaxy, uh, 130 million light years away, uh, a pair of neutron stars, uh, which are the dead remnants of formerly active stars, spiraled in towards each other and collided. How do we know this? Um, because of the new technique of gravitational wave astronomy. That collision radiated a pattern of gravitational waves outward in all directions, a tiny part of which was detected and measured here on Earth. And those ripples in the fabric of empty space had a particular shape and structure that could only be produced by a pair of colliding neutron stars. If they'd been a pair of black holes, that shape and pattern would have been different in, in telling detail. Okay, so does any of this have any practical implication? 
Well, it's like this. <clears throat> when two neutron stars collide, they touch off a firestorm of nuclear reactions that very rapidly build up quite heavy elements, uh, the nuclei of heavy elements, far along the periodic table. Things like cadmium, mercury, tungsten, platinum, and gold, among others. And it seems now that this type of event um, might be the answer to a long-standing problem of where the heaviest elements actually came from, their origin. So, if you happen to be wearing a gold ring, for example, like this, or perhaps a bit of gold jewelry, you're quite literally wearing a little piece of cosmic wreckage. Um, in fact, I'd say it's worth getting a little bit of gold jewelry just for the fun of talking about where that gold actually came from. Um, another example, not what we're wearing, but what we're actually made of. Uh, the most common element that is right down at the, the atomic level, the most common type of atom in our bodies, because we're mostly made of water, the most common atom in our bodies is just simple hydrogen, simplest possible element. Those hydrogen atoms were formed almost 14 billion years ago, very shortly after the Big Bang itself, and they've been around unchanged ever since. The second most common atom inside us, again, because we're made mostly of water, that's oxygen. And those oxygen atoms were built up by nuclear fusion deep within the cores of massive stars long before the Earth even existed. The same is true for carbon, nitrogen, and most of the other elements that are, that are inside us. So in a very literal sense, again, we're really actually made of stardust. Or, if you prefer, we're actually made of nuclear waste. Both statements are quite true. Um, another prominent recent example, of course, and my last one, it's the, it's the detection of thousands of planets around other nearby stars, which, which have really come to the fore in the last decade or so. And serious progress is now being made toward the goal of finding clones of the Earth, on which we might in turn be able to find evidence for life. All of this might happen sooner than anyone or most of us actually expect. We live in an age of miracles and wonder, and I'm sure all of you can think of examples from your own fields of study of amazing frontier phenomena that would have just not been possible a decade ago or even five years ago. New ideas, new tools, new techniques. Um, so they do wonderful things, but it's not just ideas and tools. Just as importantly, I think it's actually the way that science gets done it's often said that science is neither good nor bad, it's just the use to which we put it that can be one or the other. I'm not sure that's entirely true, uh, but I think the focus ought to be shifted instead to the process of how we get science done. And that is, I think, an example of humanity. It's something approaching its best. First, I mean, what we do with information is, is crucial. We work best when there's a free flow of information and a lot of sharing of ideas. Secrecy is discouraged. Disinformation is certainly not allowed. And national borders don't mean anything. Second, science is very good at taking the long view. Um, it can take and absorb all the brain power and all the hard work that human beings can throw at it, uh, and more besides. But persistence pays off. Individual work pays off. Collaborative work pays off. Those are all important things, and they're all part of the total picture. Narrow perspectives, short-sightedness, impatience, don't get you very far in this business. Third, I think it's terribly important that science is wide open for debate any time. Any idea, interpretation, concept, model, it's open for challenge. As long as those challenges are based on evidence and not just opinion or authority, the only authority in this game that we're all playing and have played is, is nature itself. Now, arguments about the evidence and about the interpretations happen all the time. I mean, they certainly do, and they can get quite strong. But they never become personal. That's out of bounds. Fourth, I mean, science is open-ended, just like nature is. Research questions always turn out to be richer and more diverse than we first expected. Those of you who are here today getting graduate degrees, masters, or PhDs, I think might appreciate that especially. You perhaps very likely have found that your thesis project had a lot of loose ends, questions that still needed following up, 
and your conclusions were just not as neatly and tidily tied up in a package as you might have liked or might have expected when you started. Um, but that's the real world. Um, the odd thing is that nature is not required to make sense. Uh, unfortunately, a thesis is. <laughs> and finally, in science, we can live with uncertainty. If there's not enough evidence to come up with a convincing explanation for a given phenomenon, then don't make one up. Instead, get more evidence and see where that leads. Eventually, the right path emerges. Okay, but is all of this a perfect system? Of course not. It's human, and we're all just human. But it's an ideal. Uh, the ideal as a way of finding out how nature works is a very good one. It's an ideal that's been painstakingly worked out actually over the past 400 years of learning how to do this. Doing science is, doing science is fun and exciting and demanding uh, because nature is complex and challenging and rich and strange and fascinating. And we're a long way from running out of questions. So with that, my time's up. Um, and it's time to get on to the main event for the day. I wish you all the very best of luck along that path. And I'll just say, do good science. Um, support good science and ask good questions wherever you find yourselves. And by doing that, you will actually be helping to save civilization. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Harris. Um, as I listened to his comments and as a non-scientist, I think what he, one, one hopes that other disciplines could learn from the kind of approach that he suggests and that is required to be a good scientist. And so I appreciate that insight and hope that you have learned something from it. We're very fortunate at McMaster to have some absolutely outstanding researchers and professors, and a lot of you have been exposed to them. But it's rare that we have one that is so distinguished in his field as Dr. Harris, and we are absolutely delighted to firmly cement him to the alumni of, of McMaster by honoring him today. So thank you very much, Dr. Harris. So Dr. Harris was correct. This next exchange is the most important part of the ceremony. Dr. Dean will now come forward to present the graduates to our chancellor for admission to their degrees. Will the graduates please stand? Madam Chancellor, on behalf of McMaster University Senate, I present to you these candidates and those in absentia in order that you may confer the appropriate degrees upon them and I bear witness that they are worthy and suitable. Graduands, by my authority and that of the McMaster University Senate, I have the great pleasure to admit those before me today and those in absentia to their individual degrees at McMaster University with all of the rights and privileges pertaining to those degrees. My sincere congratulations to you all. Please be seated. Graduates, I will now ask each of you to join me on stage so that the Chancellor and I may welcome you to the McMaster Community of Scholars.
Ladies and gentlemen, so that each graduate's name may be heard, it would be appreciated if during the presentation of the graduands, you would hold your collective applause to the end of each degree category. Thank you. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Doctor of Philosophy. V. Dang. Alicia Nicole Di Battista. Samanga Richard Gama. Christy Yuk San Wee. Ian Duffy. Farnaz Haider Zadeh. Lucia Myung Won. Jing Zhao. Venu Karela. Eduardo Santos Diaz. Gondali Joshi. Murray Neff Wilson. Andrew D. Davis. Michelle Lee. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Science. Emily Quinn Captain. Elizabeth Marie Salvo. Benjamin McPhail. John Mark Ernsthausen. Matthew Mao Yen Wong. Miles Bentley Marine. Jason Ross Polombaro. Alex Quasi San. Savannah Marie Spilotro. Nathan Thomas Brunetti. Xiao Ying Deng. Alexander Jovic. Joan Lucia Lopez. Cameron McLaughlin. Michael Thabane. Jim Zeng.
Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Science Honours. Hala Abdul Rahman. Mayowa Adiwale Adigoriti. Ambika Agarwal. Crystal Beverly R. Sen. Jordan Ryan Aharoni. Saima Ahmed. Raisa Ahmed. Priyanchi Akbari. Aya Akrawi. Rama Al Atut. Farooq Alagic. Sanda Salim. Ravida Ali. Chanel Anastasia Almeida. Kainat Amir. Preeti Anbalagan. Shimira Nicole Andres. Anna Angelidis. Adrian Ang Kuyakanko. Shamwil Arman Ansari. Yashama Anwar. Mahnoor Ashad. Ayesha Asaf. Mohammed Hamza Asif. Sharoze Asif. Jathavan Osohan. Jasmine Aulak. Jesus Ayala. Mohammed Ebra Aydin. Malika Babadi. <laughs> Omotunde Moralake Babatope. <laughs> Davin Rundaranat Babu, Bab, Babulal. <laughs> Oana Daniela Badisienu. <laughs> Michael Gambra Baidu. Shannon Bailey. Achint Bajpai. Siddiqui Zahir Baksh. Sukhleen Kaur Bal. Jason Balaki. Clarice, Clarice Balatbao. Brandon Anthony Baldassi. Julia Panduru. Alexandra Barker. Aurora Bashinsky Ferris. Erin Louise Betty. Naomi Michelle Bender. Mac Bennyworth. Dilip Singh Bala. Kajal Kumari Badwai. 
by Dehi Yanakuma Bhatt. Malika Bola. <laughs> Vanessa Sharon Emily Beerling. <laughs> Vanessa Bisson. Mila Bialitsa. Mary Catherine Bone. Veronica Augustina Bott. David Andrew Bowman. Taylor Bridgens. Julie Ann Briscoe. Andrew Broomfield. Isha Danielle Brown. Louise John Mackenzie Bercy. Nicholas Guillermo Camacho. Matthew Adrian Campio. Ingrid Campos Espinosa. Alisa Marie Caputo. Miguel Pedro Cardoso. Sarah Cardoso. Ariel Mark Carlos. Maria Thea Agatha Carpio. Selena Alexandra Casalino. Alexandra Cernat. Alberto Andres Cevalos. Hira Singh Chagar. Shuyan Chai. Karen Chan. Desmond Tak Fun Chan. Jason Hon Sang Chan. Caitlin Oimi Chan Fuk Tin. Monica Margarita Chase. Jingxi Chen. <laughs> Wingyang Cheng. Xinxi Cheng. Timothy Chung. Vivian Wee Chung. Jiechen Cha. Genevieve Daria Caravalli. Nico Joseph Chiarelli. Michael Chong. Hayan Chong Halid. Ian Yin Heng Chow. Stephanie Courtney Chow. Shara Chowdhury. Veronica Julia Chanfarani. Victoria Nicole Claggett. Julia Coletta. Jeremy Matthew Cooney. Michelle Stacy Coyle. Sean Creary. Nathan Joven Quachon. 
Alicia Dela. Johnson Dalmedia. Alexander Lorenzo Danese. Rebecca Dang. Mami Pinyin Dakwa. Paige Elizabeth Darville O'Quinn. Niadra de Costa. N. Acini de Silva. Abigail Laurelie Dempster. Tanjuet Daliwal. Alexandra Ann de Oreo. Christian Alexander Di Maria. Angelica Dimita. Alana de Moyang. Brianne Nicole Dopko. Kieran Doyle Davis. Coyle John, Kyle John Duncan. Palawi Duta. Anita Alicia Jechelski. Connor Edmonston. Ross Edwards. Emily Tasney Ernst. Shane Douglas Esseltine. Isabella Cristina Fabrizio. Amy Fair. William Spencer Ferrant. Christine Rayed Faza. <laughs> Kathleen Ann Fraser. Yik Wing Fung. <laughs> Alina Fush. Sabrina Elisa Garitano. Shivnet Kaur Dil. Julian Cameron Gilmore. Justin Christopher Gilmore. Lydia Ginsberg. Megan Sandra Gold. Leora Yale Goldberg. Kiana Shannon Grevesand. Novan Andre George Gray. Laura Green. Mikhailo Gromadsky. Yu Hong Gu. Angela Gupta. Karan Kumar Gupta. Ava Bazaz. Saba Hajiz Zade. Shiharia Akhikim. Danielle Halda Upis. Yamin Hamid. Jennifer Elizabeth Hollingworth Yanashak. 
Megan Hartwell. Hassan Walid Hawilo. Jing He. Mackenzie Ian Heaps. Melissa Elizabeth Henderson. Effie Huang. Jiaming Huang. Alisa Fatima Haider. Alexander Ibrahim. Chloe Alexa Lagan. Mariam Imran. Christopher Michael Inal Singh. Renata Iskander. Minahil Jabin. Bisma Jamil. Varsha Jaya Sanka. Peruntha Jaya Nandan. Misha Kainat. Alicia Kang. Jang Hoon Kang. Freshta Karimzada. Samreen Kaur. Kyle Kavaseri. Emily Jean Kenz. Sabrina Kahneman Vogelhut. Kirani Isabel Campbell Carr. Shakila Kalkali Adistani. Imbisot Asif Khan. Marina Ivona Kicic. Agatha Monica Kelishek. Kate Kim. Neha Kishore. Martin Klimuntowski. Timothy Knight. Tiffany Kong. Oriana Maria Koshik. Calvin Kwok. Alexia Cassandra Labalestra. Brioni Allison Largo. Linda Lai. James Patrick Lakatosh. Benjamin Lake. Jessica Ann Quinn Lee. Connor LeDrew. Chi Lee. Laura Lee. Michael Eric Lee. Julie Ann LeMay. Alicia Levatz. Daniel Levin. 
Tonisha Naomi Lewis. Keshi Li. Wai Long Li. Ju Xing Li. Julia Marie Liberale. Jennifer Lim. Funing Lin. Yao Lin. CJ Lindo. Jordan Low. Ying Lu. Gawang Gatso Luding. Carolyn Kim Lee. Lauren Lee. Danyasri Madi Boina. Arjuna Satideep Maharaj. Suraj Yai Devinch Mahida. Jamie Maloney. Aneka Manamperi. Victoria Maria Mirando. Mark Mariella. Adriana Adele Jocelyn Marlowe. Adam Robert Marr. David Martin. Diego Felipe, Felipe Martinez. Helen Marie Margetz. Jesse Tyler Mastrangelo. Rafia Masood. Deborah Shalini Mata. Arani Mathia Lagan. Gajuna Mathi Yalagan. Chelsea Jade Mathis. Justin Scott Channel McConnell. Megan Rose McFadden. Alicia Castellano McGlashan. Bridget McGlynn. Eva Medipur Atai. Kunal Mehta. Vatsal Mehta. Basem Mikhail. Alicia Katerina Mel. Pablo Andres Mendoza. Curtis Andrew Menon. Marima Menzildic. Madeline Maria Miconi. Diana Vanessa Miranda. Anna um, Miroshnichenko. Pragya Mishra. Ria Mistri. Colin Michael Moffat. Sibat Bekri Mohammed. Woo! 
Mariam Mohammadi. Mustafa Walid Mustafa Mohammed. Erin Mackenzie Monette. Alicia Maria Montesano. Courtney Victoria Moore. Brigitte Moser. Aheen Mukherjee. Courtney Josephine Mulholland. Dana Murdoch. Sabrina Christina Musto. Sanjana Mutana. Arani Muturaja. Zara Anissa Najarali. Shalini Namathiatham. Hasti Namvarhigili. Zeal E. Huma Nasir. Kirsten Ellen Nickel. Jin Yu. Noella Narona. Gillian Alexandra Northrup. Kwacho Nto. Kelly Nikil Chuk. Rabina Najat Obaidula. Natalia Ogrodnik. Laila Omar Nazir. Harpreet Kaur Pabla. Yi Chao Pan. Joel Pang. Alison Ma Panizales. Julia Lore Panta Pantalio. Jonathan Gregera Panueles. Jamin Park. Salina Pasit Kaman. Juanish Patel. Saloni Patel. Alexandra Liana Pasibali. Stephanie Fung. Victoria Amanda Piccioni. Sabrina Alexander Piconi. Andrew Albert Piduti. Jacob Joseph Peshanovsky. Jessica Lynn Pizzoferrato. Taylor Catherine Poxai. John Alexander Podidvorny. Jenna Lee Price. Ushma Jaidev Purahit. Malaika Riaz Qureshi. Janine Sasha Ann Raffington. Talia Rahif. Simran Rai. 
Aravind Rajendran. Karashini Ramamurti. Smruthi Ramesh. Noel Caris Monique Ramos. Nadia Amanda Ramrup. Joshua Kailon Rawana. Madeline McKinley Merritt Rawlins. Tanya Reginald. Morgan Alexander Richards. Shadir Rimsey. Alexander Ristich. <coughs> Stephen Jayun Ryu. Sarah Saba Pathapilai. Ilana V. Sadri. Aisha Ikra Saeed. Kulsum Saeed. Samantha Salata. Lisa Samadi. Justin, Justin Sammy. Praveen Sanmugan Anthan. Samantha Jane Scarf. Christina Scavuzzo. Sydney Alexandra Scheffler. Jason Marcus Schneider. Jasmeet Sechon. <laughs> Caleb Etienne Silla Silas Seward. Sam Shafier. Mohammed Abdullah Shahaz. Efu Shi. Maya Anil K. Sindhu. Aaron Dawn Smith. Natalie Michelle Solis. Kiroshant Shripati. Juliana Marie Stangrum. Sylvia Stanitzer. Nicholas Stepan. Fallon Maria Stumpo. Patrick Neil Sullivan. Ja Sen Sun. Salman Surangiwala. Hassan Ahmed Sied. Karen Tagar. Hadia Tahir. Duan Fang Tan. James Tanzil. Mahnoor Tariq. Julia Tenhova. Narisa Suarez Tenorio. Robin Tetro. 
Jordan Matthew Thiessen. Ross Edward Thompson. Reynud Tiwari. Nicole Maria Tkadletz. Alan Tran. Jenny Tran. Aditya Trivedi. Forum Trivedi. Griffin Trong. Andrew Tu. Rachel Valencourt. Cheyenne Valencia Hines. Alexandra Vastello. Patricia Vasquez. Megan Jessica Fearhut. Feng Huan Wang. Kai Wang. Limin Wang. Yi Wang. Mahnur Wasim. Elizabeth Ann Webb. Sarah Michelle Whitelaw. Indika Vijaya Sundara. Alexander James Wilson. Michelle Wiskar. Sherry On Yi Wong. Ricky Chan Yin Wong. Victoria Wong. Rebecca Suzanne Wooten. Larissa Natali Vinitsky. Stanis Javier. Yimin Chie. Xiao Kong Xu. Yiran Xu. Yue Xu. Kevin M. Yang. Xin Tong Yao. Ojan Yakani. Bin Yu Ye. Anne Marie Diamond Yeboa. Shannon Yi. Nadia Yehia. Ricky Yin. Claudia Rad Usif. Sandra Yusif. Carolina Zach. Michelle Zaman. Dan Valerio Zamfir. Natalie Zaydan. Yifan Zhang.
Yinan Zhang. Yan Ji. William Zizek. Kiana Zorabi. Mario Zulini. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Science. Danish Ayub. Alexandra Badalov. Sunny Singh Benipal. Ashley Ho Ching Chow. Kayla Marie Coco. Mary Garciella Cruz. Raj Depp. Adeyemi Oluwatobi Fakoredi. Shayochi Fan. Mitchell Bando Foley. Annabel Krutianski. Kovsika Kukananthan. Amy Lau. Lauren McLeod. Nicole Mancini. Alexia Manuel. Hayley McRae. Vaideha Mukeshkuma Patel. Ryan Puviraj. Michelle Jesus Rego. Satesh Arvinda Sigobin. Shona Shiel. Kabisan Thayaparan. Reese Elliott Thomas. Jonathan Tran. Kashmala Wakar. Guang Yang. Lucian Linden Yogaratnam. Jai In Yu. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Medical Radiation Sciences. Walid Abdulaziz. Marielle Elizabeth Catherine Adams. Samira Ahmed Aden. Martine Elisia Aguia. Mahad Ahmed. Jennifer Diana Allen. Subair Ali. Jobel Alonso. McKenna Elizabeth Appleyard. 
Bara Basim Aidan. Anita Bakshi. Alexandra Erin Bolston. Kwame Lee Barnhart. Jelena Brankovic. Neely Ashley Antoinette Bray. Deepali Bulsara. Haley Louise Jeanette Bograff. Jessica Page Canham. Daneli Antonio Cerasoli. Erin Chan. Bonnie Chan. Carmen Chan. Odella Bao N. Chow. Marie Lauren Colonna. Elaine Dang. Ashna Anna Danielle. Keaton Victoria DeLanger. Brianna Nicole Delgatti. Robert Sean Dima. Nic Nicolina Juric. Yanif Elankri. Mary Ellen Elizabeth Teresa Empey. Gary Epp Eng. Arden Thea Fairbrother. Suzanne Garrett. Gloria Glander. Mallory Jean Greystone. Connor Martin Gresham. Charles John Greitmeyer. Justina Maria Gregorczyk. Michele Gut. Laura Nicole Hickey. Jasmine Vanessa Hines. Jocelyn Lok Wun Ho. Davin Hung Filafet. Sapir Hoveda. Jai Yung Kim. Min Siung Kim. Enoch Ming Lok Kong. Valentina Ita Italia Lagano. Claire Lan. Jenna Marie Leslie. Tammy Jia Wei Lu. Bailey Longland. Yelena Mamich. Raina Matsushita. Brittany Robin McKinley. Emily Elizabeth Mitchell. David Nguyen. Rosa Nguyen. Shannon Louise O'Connor. 
Sarah Jane Pallis. Angel Panofsky. Ashruti Patel. Blythe Alexandra Pierce. Alicia Fan. Leslie Marie Quinn. Ahmed Ramadan. Scott Andrew Riley. Laksika Satkunna Lingam. Morgan Leslie Skilstra. Lydia Vilma Schreiber. Philip Shimbida. Sivetha Shivanathan. Christina Michelle Smiljanic. Jonathan Luke So. Ruby Ka Ye So. Gloria Sok. Serena Diane Stemler. Crystal Suleiman. Paxton Sirachi. Holly Sire. Anita Tavana. Sandra Nicole Tavis. Nikki Christine Taylor. Kevin Isamu Toyanaga. Noor Ulhuda. Stephanie Varga. Samantha Avery Vukosa. Tracy Vuong. Chris Wang. Jenny Wang. Cassandra Brittany Ann Wavell. Alexandria Christine Webb. Carly Rianne Westendorp. Liana Yunin. Armani Zeeb. Eileen Ling Zeng. Shue Yang Zhao. Let's give one more round of applause to all our newest graduates. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to introduce Ms. Preeti Angalagan, a graduate from the degree Bachelor of Science Honors in the Life Sciences Co-op Program, who will be delivering the valedictory address. in Balligan. <laughs> Good afternoon, Chancellor Suzanne Labarge, Vice Chancellor and President Patrick Dean, Provost David Farrar, esteemed faculty, honored guests, family, friends, but most of all, good afternoon to the McMaster Science graduating class of 2018. Welcome to Convocation. My name is Preeti and I'm 
really sweaty up here, and really excited to be your valedictorian. A lot of us here today seem to think we're celebrating an expensive piece of paper, which is true. But before you make that your Instagram caption, we're also here to celebrate something more. When we received our admission letter in high school, each of us chose to open up to the promise of something new, of something untested and unsure. We weighed the risk and embraced the possibilities. We chose McMaster Science. So this moment is not just defined by the content of our degrees, but a shared journey that has brought us here today. For some of us, our journeys began on the bleachers of Ron Joyce Stadium, reciting our Welcome Week oath. For others, it was catching their first 47 to Hamilton. And if you were like me, it started 20 minutes late to class. In retrospect, how we felt in first year is no different from how we feel today. I can bet your heart is beating really quickly because you're feeling both nervous and excited for the path that lies ahead. Back then, we made our way to the start line, eager to race each other, and realized shortly after that sprinting through an undergrad is actually exhausting work. Sooner or later, you run off track and find yourself a little lost. Maybe you got rejected from a student leadership opportunity, didn't get your favorite co-op placement, failed a midterm, or managed an MSU presidential campaign team and lost. That last one might have just been me. At times like these, your path may have felt singular. But our paths converge on one fact. At some point, we all backtracked from a wrong turn, retraced our steps, and started over to get here today. And you should be so proud that you kept going, found your way, and made it to the end of this journey. And as we leave this one behind, a new one begins tomorrow. Some people may have told you that the lessons you learned and memories you made over the years will go with you to your next adventure. So let's never forget Dr. Bernier, who reminds us on every midterm that Rachel Carson wrote Silent Springs, or that finding a study table in Thode during exam season is a futile attempt because the chem bios have monopolized them all. Or let's never forget that we can solve differential equations faster than solving the basement of arts quad. The same can't be said for quantum mechanics, but my friends in physics have got it down. The big thing about these little things, though, is that we've shared them together in laughter, in tears, and every emotion in between, which makes us a community for it. So I thank you for the generosity of a shared experience. And in the spirit of generosity, there are also some obligatory thank yous I should add because educating and supporting a group of 20-something millennials isn't easy. It was through thoughtful wisdom from our professors, balanced energy of our peers, and careful organization of our programs that built an environment under which each of us could grow, learn, make mistakes, and achieve more than we thought was possible. I thought a lot about why this journey specifically warrants a large and extravagant ceremony. And the answer is blaringly apparent when you take a look at your parents. One of their fondest dreams have come true. You've accomplished, accomplished something difficult and tangible that has enlarged you as a person and will make your life better from here on in forever. So thank you, moms, dads, and mentors. This one's for you. Wherever your journey takes you next, maybe across the world, starting full-time employment, more school, or time off, remember that McMaster has prepared us as one of the best universities in the country. Although around here we spend less time celebrating that prestige than we do pushing ourselves to cultivate it. Being among the best in the world is not a label, but a calling to explore innovative and compassionate ways of thinking as scientists, to conduct meticulous and relevant research and critically see ourselves as part of the bigger picture. You are the fruit of higher education who will create a brighter world tomorrow. But as you do, to the extent that you can, err in the direction of kindness. Over these years, each of you have worked to build, your, build relationships and communities that you're a part of, but most importantly, yourselves. That luminous part of you that exists beyond the lab bench, your part-time job, or 3 a.m. Thode nights is who you've grown to be, and that person is as bright and shining as any that has ever been. I'm incredibly humbled to be amongst each of you and call you peers, but I'm more honored to call you friends. Take comfort in knowing that McMaster will always be our home and the ground here will always be soft. As we continue to take steps forward as proud alumni, our prints stand the chance of one day forming a path for someone else's journey. 
Congratulations, class of 2018. I wish you great happiness, all the luck in the world, and a beautiful summer. Thank you. Thank you, President. May I now call upon Dr. Dean, who will be presenting two President's Awards of Excellence in Student Leadership. Would Sabat Mohammed please come forward? Today, Sabat Mohammed graduates with an Honours Bachelor of Science in Life Sciences. It's frankly baffling how she found time for her studies, let alone for the level of academic excellence she's achieved. Sabat has successfully run two McMaster Student Union presidential campaigns. She co-founded Black Aspiring Physicians of McMaster and the McMaster People's Project, which promotes diversity among student leaders across campus. Sabat coaches 10 and 11-year-olds in basketball, showing leadership, vision, strength, passion, and compassion. Whether they win the game or not, her kids work as a team, supporting one another on the court and off. Sabat is a volunteer with BOLD, mentoring and supporting black youth who want to go to university. Her annual commitment to support first-year students didn't end at Welcome Week. She made sure to check in on them throughout the year. Sabat took the initiative to help shape a life sciences curriculum that focuses more on community and on experiential learning. Congratulations, Sabat. Very well done. Fabulous. Here you go. Thank you, Sabat. Would Ushma Purohit please come forward? A girl with an education is unstoppable. This is the slogan of She's the First, an international advocacy group that promotes education for girls in low-income countries. Ushma Purohit, who has completed her Honours Bachelor of Science in Life Sciences, founded a chapter of She's the First right here at McMaster University, and it would seem truly that she is unstoppable. Ushma, while still pursuing her undergraduate degree, joined research work in Dr. Joanna Wilson's laboratory and took the lead in studying a new species of hydra. In a lab full of graduate students and postdoctoral researchers, Ushma has become the resident expert on hydras and is the co-author of the lab's first publication on the species. No mean feat for an undergraduate. Outside the classroom and lab, Ushma has not only the drive and the vision to push for social justice, she also has organizational skills and maturity to turn that vision into reality. As Action Plan Administrator for the Canadian Mental Health Association in Hamilton, she helped organize the Ride, Don't Hide campaign. She has also worked tirelessly for social justice causes in her role with Watsi McMaster. While she was president of UNICEF McMaster, Ushma's fierce commitment to social well-being earned the organization the J. Lynn Watson Award for Community Service. As chair of the Social Issues Club Division of MSU, Ushma mentored and advised more than 100 student leaders of campus groups and shaped policy that helped students from stunningly diverse backgrounds all forge strong bonds in their new home here at McMaster. Ushma balances academic excellence with strong leadership and organizational skills, and does it all with unstoppable grace and humor. Congratulations, Ushma.
Congratulations to that, Anushma. I now call upon Dean of Science, Dr. Maureen McDonald, who will present the Governor General's Academic Medal and the Burke Memorial Ring. The Governor General's Academic Medal is one of the most prestigious awards a student in Canada can receive. Established in 1873, this honor recognizes exceptional academic achievement at the high school, collegiate, undergraduate, and graduate levels. Each year, McMaster awards just two Governor General Silver Medals to the students at the university who have achieved the highest academic standing at the undergraduate level. Earning this allocade not only places this year's recipients among the top students to graduate from McMaster, it places them among the top students in all of Canada. On behalf of Her Excellency, the Right Honourable Julie Payette, it gives me great pride to present the Governor General's Academic Silver Medal to Vanessa Beerling. Madam Chancellor, I ask that you and all those present join with me to express recognition of her achievement. Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to present the Burke Memorial Ring for outstanding academic achievements and contributions to undergraduate activities in a Bachelor of Science program. I am pleased to announce that Sabat Mohammed is also the winner of this award. Congratulations, Vanessa and Sabat. May I now introduce Corey Healy Masters, a graduate from the Bachelor of Science Kinesiology class of 2015 and a representative of the McMaster Alumni Association. Corey will now deliver the Alumni Association address. Thank you. Chancellor Labarge, Patrick Dean, uh, President Dean, President McCurley, award winners, honorees, McMaster and Mohawk faculty, fellow alumni, guests, and especially members of the McMaster class of 2018. Wow, convocation. If this ceremony could talk, it might tell you, your life is changing. So come take part in this ancient ritual and stick around and take pictures with your parents in a borrowed gown from backstage. Crossing this stage marks one of the most significant changes in your life. You're moving from your career as a student to a career as a professional, or from being an undergraduate to a graduate student, or you're gonna trade the goals and routines of university for something more personal. We all experience the graduation transition in our own way, and I can assure you there are many more transitions ahead of you as you move through the next stages of your life. Now, what won't change is that the experience of earning your degree will always be a part of you. At times, that connection will feel strong, and others, it'll take a graceful backseat to other priorities. But when you do want to turn that lifelong relationship into an activity, a digital connection, volunteering, or any one of the dozen opportunities, the McMaster Alumni Association will be there for you. It's our job. You can read about your alma mater, your fellow alumni, and classmates in MAC, the news magazine for alumni, either in print or digitally, or through our monthly newsletter, Maroon Mail. You can be a part of the MAC alumni communities on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Instagram. But we're still holding out for Vine, too. And if you really like sharing news 
and bragging to your friends about the great things happening at McMaster, jo join our team of social ambassadors, the social marauders, and we'll thank you with some great little swag because your life can always use a little more maroon. If you've chosen to continue calling this great city home, I'd encourage you to participate in our MAC-10 events. This series of events and services includes career assistance, mentoring and online and in-person networking, and great socials designed specifically for new grads. If you find yourself living far away from McMaster, keep an eye out on the events calendar, as we do try to make our way all around to all corners of the globe from time to time. When you leave here today, I know it's possible that you won't remember a single thing I've said, and that's fine. I mean, it hurts, but it's fine. The association has just sent you an email with a fun little quiz reflecting on your university years. And yes, you do get participation marks if you complete it on a Friday morning. When you do the quiz, take a moment and have a look around the website, alumni.mcmaster.ca, and I'm guessing you'll be surprised at how much is available to you now as a new grad and throughout your life. So whenever it is that you're ready to connect, we'll be here. Members of the class of 2018, my, serious con my sincerest congratulations on your convocation and welcome to the McMaster Alumni Association. We're very proud indeed to have you join the Mac Alumni family. Congratulations again and thank you. Thank you, Carl. I invite Dr. Dean back to the podium to deliver his president's address. Uh, Madam Chancellor, Dr. Harris, President McCurley, distinguished colleagues, graduates, ladies and gentlemen. Convocation, one often points out on occasions like this, is a communal event. The calling together of the different members and constituencies of the university family for the purpose of celebrating both individual achievements and our shared vision and mission. In a public institution like McMaster, where the education provided to students is very clearly understood to, to be both an individual and a societal benefit, Speakers like myself tend to address themselves to the balance that all of you, our graduates, are expected to strike in the lives you will live beyond today's ceremony. In one form or other, the advice you are typically given is this. Seek personal fulfillment and success, but never forget your obligation also to serve the greater good. In such a context, you're unlikely to hear anyone celebrating the virtues of ambition, a human attribute our culture on the whole regards with suspicion because we associate it with selfish, indeed sometimes antisocial attitudes. We talk of someone displaying naked ambition, meaning ambition unmediated, uncontrolled, not linked to a purpose beyond itself. This is the kind of ambition Shakespeare was thinking about in his play Macbeth. I expect many of you will know the plot of that tragedy. Macbeth is a Scottish general whose ambition is kindled by, of all things, a group of witches who predict he will one day become king of Scotland. He becomes consumed with ambition, plots to murder the king, and pondering that course of action utters these famous lines. I have no spur to prick the sides of my intent, but only vaulting ambition, which o'erleaps itself and falls on the other side. Now, my daughter, who is now in her 30s, has spent her life riding horses, so I'm extremely well trained to identify that as an equestrian metaphor. A rider, properly in control of their horse, pricks the sides of the animal with their spurs to initiate a jump. The point of Macbeth's surprisingly candid observation is that there is no particular goal spurring him on, nothing other than vaulting ambition, or the desire simply to jump with no regard for the point of doing it. His, in other words, is selfish or uncontrolled ambition 
which he acknowledges uh, gets easily out of control. It overleaps itself and can end in confusion or disaster, as indeed it did for him, uh, who in one film version at least, the Roman Polanski version, wound up with his head on a spike as a lesson to others. That's why people are wary of making ambition a theme for convocation speeches. At the same time, though, it is important to acknowledge that ambition in some form must play an important role in the work of universities and the lives of the people who comprise them, whether students, faculty, staff, or alumni. For example, you're all here today celebrating your graduation because you have aspired to achieve this. Each of you knows how much hard work has brought you here, and I hope you are right now experiencing the pleasure of personal ambitions legitimately fulfilled. If you're not sure exactly what comes next, that's fine, it's understandable, and it's certainly not an indication that your ambition has overleapt itself. The desire for knowledge, understanding, and enlightenment is always a sufficient spur to action. It is ambition of a very pure and admirable kind. But many of you have greater and more concrete ambitions than this, I know. That is one of the things that make universities such wonderful places to work. While they exist in a sense because of ambition, because of our determination to know and to understand our world and the greater cosmos in which our world is situated, they nourish our imaginations and they fuel our greater aspirations. And by doing that, they prompt us to identify even more challenging goals for ourselves and for our society at large. Universities are places, in other words, in which the innocent and not so innocent ambition of individuals can and should be channeled for the betterment of our society and of our world. In 1918, the British philosopher Bertrand Russell, for whose archives, as some of you may know, McMaster provides a home, was about to be imprisoned for his pacifist activities. Pondering proposed roads to freedom, he wrote this. While the great majority of men and women in ordinary times pass through life without ever contemplating or criticizing either their own conditions or those of the world at large, a certain percentage, guided by personal ambition, make the effort of thought and will which is necessary to place themselves among the more fortunate members of the community. But very few among these are seriously concerned to secure for all the advantages which they seek for themselves. It is only a few rare and exceptional men and women who have that kind of love toward mankind at large that makes them unable to endure patiently the general mass of evil and suffering, regardless of any relation it may have to their own lives. So in that passage, Russell admirably describes the way in which that always slightly ambivalent thing, personal ambition, is transmogrified in some people into unambiguous good. As some seek to secure for all the advantages which they seek for themselves, ambition for the self turns into ambition for, for the good of society and of the world at large. Speaking at Northwestern University almost exactly 12 years ago at an event very similar to this one, Barack Obama commented on a certain poverty to be found in ambition for the self, because paradoxically, he said, it asks too little of the self. This is how he glossed that point. It is only when you hitch your wagon to something larger than yourself that you realize your true potential. Obama's point was partly that personal ambition is not necessarily incompatible with an altruistic social vision. Indeed, 
the latter is frequently an extension and fulfillment of the former. All of this is to acknowledge that while our society is nervous about ambition, as well it should be, given certain recent developments on the world stage, humanity will go nowhere without it. And we must continually find positive and constructive ways to stimulate it, to articulate it, and to direct it. As graduates of McMaster, you are the beneficiaries of 130 years of positive ambition. What an effort of thought and will went into the opening of the McMaster Medical School in 1970, the construction of the McMaster Nuclear Reactor in 1957, the establishment of the McMaster Museum of Art, the